Have you ever been working on an electronics project and find yourself running out of I.O. pins? With so many different sensors and actuators available, you may find yourself quickly running out of microcontroller connections. A typical Arduino Uno only has 6 analog pins and 14 digital pins. How do you connect everything you need? That's when you need one of these. It's a PCF8574 port expander, and today I'm going to show you how to use it. My name is Luke, and this is Terminal Curiosity. So this is a PCF8574. It comes in through-hole and surface mount packages, and it provides eight additional I.O. pins using just two on the microcontroller, or three if you want to include interrupts, but this is optional. It uses I2C to communicate, and you can stack up to eight of these chips on the same two micro pins, which means up to 64 extra I.O.s in total for the cost of just two. This is done by using these three address select pins, which let you configure unique I2C addresses for each chip. There's also an A variant of this chip, which is exactly the same, but with a different set of I2C addresses. So you could actually stack another eight devices on the same bus if you really needed to. Although that might be really pushing the capacitance limit of the I2C bus. If this chip doesn't suit your project for whatever reason, then you have a few other options. There's the MCP23017, which has 16 IOs per device and a few other fancy features. There's also the 74LVC595, which is an 8-bit serial shift register. And there's also the MCP23S17, which uses SPI instead of I2C, if you prefer that. Today's Chip Tips video is about the PCF8574 and how to use it. But if you'd like to see a video on any of these other options listed, let me know in the comments. I should also briefly cover I2C as a communication protocol. It's a very common interface used between devices over short distances on a circuit board. Typical applications are one or more microcontrollers communicating to external peripheral ICs. The microcontroller is typically the master, which controls the clock signal, and sends instructions to the slave devices over the data signal. These listen for their unique addresses and perform instructions as communicated. Since it only needs two communication pins, it's a very versatile protocol and is used very commonly for a variety of sensors and chips. I'm wiring up this circuit using the pinout from the data sheet. I'll be using my trusty Arduino Uno to drive the circuit and a separate breadboard power supply. This chip can run on 2.5 volts to 5 volts power, which gives you some flexibility. I'll be using 5 volts. I'm using 4 LEDs and 4 switches, so we can get a good idea of both the input and output functionality. The switches are all switching the I.O. pins to ground and have 4.7k pull-up resistors to 5 volts. In this case, I'm going to wire all three address pins to ground, which gives us an I2C address of hex 20, as seen here. The SDA and SCL pins of the chip are wired to pins 12 and 13 of the Arduino, which are dedicated I2C pins on the Arduino Uno. You could theoretically use any digital pins to perform this I2C function, but it's much easier if you use pins intended for that purpose. I need to connect the ground pins between the Arduino and the breadboard. According to the datasheet, the chip is more effective at syncing current rather than sourcing it. So I've wired the LEDs from 5 volts to the chip with a 470 ohm current limit resistor each. In most applications, you'll also need to include pull-up resistors on the data and clock lines, unless they're already included in the master device. The Arduino I'm using here has very weak internal pull-ups, so I'm going to add 4.7k external ones just to make sure it works properly. Now let's plug it in. And nothing happens. That's because we need to write some code first. I'm going to start with a simple program to test the outputs of the chip. This will work by cycling from 0 to 255, which is 8 bits, and turning on each LED for each corresponding bit. I'm using the wire library, which is a standard library included with the Arduino IDE, and it's the default library used for communicating through I2C. The address of the chip is hex 20, and the read-write bit is automatically managed using the read or write function. We don't have to worry about that. Yep, there's a silly typo. Let's fix that. And upload it. So it looks like that worked well. We can see the LEDs are cycling in a binary counting function. They seem to be changing a bit slower than I thought they would. Ah, that's right, this is because we're counting for all 8 bits of the port, but only the 4 most significant are used for the LEDs as outputs, the others are inputs. So if we change this line of code to shift all bits by 4, and recompile, there we go, now we can see all LEDs are counting much quicker. Next I'm going to modify the program we've just worked on, so that instead of writing to the outputs, we're now going to read them as inputs. So I'll comment out the previous code and push that out of the way. I'm going to define a new variable called readValue, and this will be used to capture the read information of the chip, which in this case is the four different switches. This information will then be printed to the terminal so that I can directly verify that the code is working and reading the states of each switch. 
I'll print out these states in binary format just to make it easier to read. We'll compile it again, open the terminal. Looks pretty good. So when I press one of the switch buttons, it transitions from a one to a zero on the terminal. And as I click down multiple switches, it affects multiple answers. In this case, I've wired it so that when the switches are activated, the signal gets pulled to ground, which the Arduino reads as a zero. And when the switch is disabled, the resistors pull it high, so the Arduino reads this as a one. I spent a little time playing with that code, and now I've made a program that combines the input and output features for the last two that we've looked at. So first, it includes the wire library so that we can talk through I2C communications. Then we define the device address as hex 20. In the initialize code, I'm setting all outputs as on so that when I turn on any switches, it can pull them down to zero. I found that if I didn't set this, the code would get stuck on certain inputs and I could only change them once. Next, I define read value, which will be the value that captures any read values from the port. And that's also been defined as all ones so that it can be reset to zero by the switches. Next, I have an infinite loop. And within this, we check if there are any data on the bus that can be read. If so, I read it and capture it and then shift all the four lowest bits to become the four highest bits. This captures all four values of switches and then sends them back onto the LEDs. And here's the result of this final code. Here we can see that we have four inputs that are being directly translated to four outputs using only two pins of the Arduino for I2C. This is a great demonstration of the PCF8574 and how it can provide extra IOs to your project. Now I briefly mentioned earlier that this chip also has interrupt capability. In this case, if we refer to the data sheet, this tells us that an interrupt signal is generated anytime there's a rising edge or a falling edge on one of the port inputs. So this tells us that anytime one of the input signal changes, the interrupt pin gets pulled low. You could wire this directly to an interrupt capable pin on the Arduino itself, and then link that to an interrupt service routine in code. Now, if you'd prefer to not do all the fun component wiring work yourself, there are breakout boards available just like these ones, which can be used exactly the same. All you need to do is plug in power, ground, clock, and data, and program it using the same software. Some of these use jumpers to set your address, whereas some of them use switches, and many of them allow you to daisy chain them multiple together in case you want to use multiple devices. These units are good for if you want to save time by skipping all the component work and just do plug and play for a larger scale assembly. Personally, I quite like doing the hands-on component level stuff, but it's up to you. And that's how you can use the PCF8574 to get more IO pins on your electronics projects. If you found this video helpful, give it a like, and if you want to see what I'm using these chips for in my next project, consider subscribing. Cheers.